Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yimini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael. May Kodesh Baruch Hu, may God protect our brave soldiers as they eradicate our enemies in Gaza and around the world. May God save all the hostages in Gaza from harm and return them home immediately. I want to wish a happy birthday to the nine-month-old baby Kfir, who was kidnapped by Hamas and is now past one years old as a hundred days and beyond since in captivity. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafu Shalema of Rav Amitai Ben Shoshana and all those who need to experience a speedy and complete recovery. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmiel Daniel Ben Gedalia. May the souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Bo, Anticipate the Geula, Anticipate the Redemption. Before I begin, I would like to mention that this Shabbos is Yuchfat the anniversary of the Rebbe's leadership over the Chabad movement since 1951. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Lushnerson, assumed the mantle of leadership just one year after his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, had passed away. With immense dedication, the Rebbe set out to rebuild the Jewish people after the Holocaust. He sent thousands of rabbis to all parts of the globe to connect with every single Jew. And their vast commitment to Hashem, to God, and the mission that the Rebbe gave them changed world jury into the powerhouse it is today. And we mark this special day by rededicating ourselves to the mission the Rebbe set before us. We ignite the fire of every Jew. The Rebbe constantly emphasized that we are the last generation of exile and the first generation of Giula, of redemption, and may we merit the ultimate redemption and the coming of Mashiach. Our Parsha has the last three makas, the last three plagues that God struck the Egyptians for enslaving the Jewish people. The first plague was one of locusts. Swarms of grasshoppers descended upon Egypt and consumed all the crops and vegetation. And Pari relented and called Moshe to end the plague and stop the suffering. But no sooner had it completed, Pari's stubbornness kicked back in and he refused to release the Jewish people. In response, God struck the Egyptians with the next plague complete and total darkness. The Egyptians couldn't see for three days, but could not move for the last three days as the darkness became extremely dense. When the plagues of locusts and darkness concluded, Pari called Moshe back and offered to let the Jewish people leave without their animals. When Moshe refused, Pari sent him away and warned him to never appear in his presence again, lest he be put to death. The last plague, the death of all firstborn, Makas Bacharis, began at midnight and wreaked havoc upon the Egyptian people. As the death toll rose, Pari, a firstborn himself, ran to Moshe and told him to lead the Jewish people out of Egypt immediately. The Jewish nation gathered their belongings and the Egyptians' valuables and left Egypt midday on the 15th of Nisan. However, a question comes to mind. Just before the last plague, Makas Bacharis, the death of all firstborn, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, about the Korban Pesach, the Pesach sacrifice. The Jewish people were to take in a sheep into their home for four days, and on the fourth day, they shall slaughter it, the 14th of Nisan, and they shall paint their doorpost with its blood and eat the sacrifice in its entirety. The Pasuk writes, They shall eat the meat that same night, and they shall eat it roasted over fire with matzais and marer with bitter herbs. Similarly, just seven verses later, seven psukim later, it says to celebrate Pesach. For seven days, the Pasuk writes, Shivas yamim matzas techelu. For seven days you shall eat matzas. But the last plague, the death of our firstborn, had not even happened yet. Nor did they leave Egypt. And Pesach is a celebration of our exodus from Egypt of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. How were they already instructed to celebrate a redemption that has not yet occurred? The Rabbeinu Bechayr of Bach ibn Usher gives an interesting explanation. He answers that the matzah and celebration here commemorates the matzah by Avram Avinu. When the angels came to notify Avram Avinu and Sarah Imenu that their son Yitzchak will be born, 
the angels were given matzahs to eat. The Rabbeinu Bechaya explains that since the notification of Yitzchak's birth signals the continuity of the Jewish people, this is a cause for celebration. Before Yitzchak was born, Avram was told by God that his descendants would be enslaved but eventually freed to go to the Promised Land. And now with the preparations to leave Mitzrayim, to leave Egypt, God is finally fulfilling his covenant, his promise with Avraham and redeeming his descendants and leading them to the Promised Land. However, the Aracham HaKadosh, Rav Chaim ben Atar, a Moroccan commentary and Kabbalist, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He agrees with the question, why were we commanded to celebrate a redemption that has not yet transpired? How could they remember and commemorate a freedom from slavery that isn't their current reality? And the Orach HaMakadosh answers that this preemptive commemoration set the path for the ultimate celebration and the redemption that took place. Through their belief in God to fulfill the covenant made with Avraham, they merited and enabled Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim their exodus from Egypt. The Jewish people's actions set the stage and paved the way for God himself to come down and avenge the blood of his nation. According to the Aruch HaMakadosh, our deeds must preempt and anticipate the blessings, the holiness we wish to have in our lives. And similarly, the Lubavitch Rebbe always emphasized and concluded his talks by mentioning that it will take all of us to pave the path for the Geula, for the ultimate redemption and the coming of Mashiach. In our daily life, it is imperative that we do not just envision our goals, but set the stage pave the way towards making them a reality. And this is true in our mundane lives as much as it applies in the spiritual realm. Each day we are presented with opportunities to lay the groundwork to achieve our goals and accomplish our dreams. Whether we take massive leaps or even just small steps, we are leading the way for our potential to become our reality. I will conclude with a powerful quote of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The world is reflection of our own inner state. When we cultivate peace within, we bring peace to the world. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.